Hey guys and welcome to this video where I introduce you to this little man. Hello! <laughs> Are you excited to be a YouTube star? Yes! A YouTube star! He says he's going to be a YouTube star. <laughs> so, if you've seen my Instagram, well Beck had her beautiful fall on Sunday morning around 4am. How cute! Um, <laughs> what are you doing? And a lot of people had asked me beforehand, um, would I make kind of a video about the foaling and everything like that? So I got as much footage as I could. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna talk you through what happened and yeah, the whole process. <laughs> So I'm going to talk you guys through it here and I'll add in clips whenever I have some. First, a little bit about Welbeck. If you are a very long, long time viewer of my channel, you will remember Welbeck from when I used to compete and ride her. Uh, we jumped up to 1m35 classes. She is a very, very special mare. Um, she was really the horse that brought me on so much. Um, even though she had never jumped those that height herself, she's just so brave, so game for anything. Um, I got her after kind of losing a bit of confidence with um, my ponies because they used to stop and they used to fall off quite a lot. Um, but whereas Welbeck's just the complete opposite, she would never ever stop. She'd always go for the jumps. She was just such a brilliant girl. Um, she was 12 last year when we decided to put her in foal. Um, yeah, we just thought like, she's just too special. Um, it'd be so great to have a foal from her. And I had the two boys um, to ride. So I didn't really have time to compete three horses anyway. So we said, look, we'll try and get a foal from her. I have a whole vlog and video from when we were putting her in foal and the whole process of that as well, because it didn't happen first time. It took a little bit of organizing. Um, the sire of this foal is called Dignified Van Sorgvlet. I'm probably gonna butcher that, but we're just gonna call him Dignified. Uh, so that's the stallion we decided to go with. And I explain more about why we picked that stallion in the video. So now back to the foaling itself. So, so basically Welbeck was actually due on the 2nd of April and obviously didn't foal until the 18th of April. But this is pretty common, um, especially with maiden mares. Maiden mares, a mare who's never had a foal before, they often go well over um, their due date. So on Saturday, the 17th of April, it was actually my dad's birthday. And he was so sure she was gonna foal for his birthday. It was like this little running joke that, you know, she, she was gonna give him a great birthday present of a foal on his birthday. So Friday night, because obviously his birthday starts from midnight, um, uh, he was like, okay, she's gonna fall. She's definitely gonna fall. And because my dad was actually away Saturday night, so he was so worried that she was going to fall Saturday night. Um, he was like, oh no, 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 she's not gonna fall Saturday night because I'm not here. She's definitely gonna fall Friday night. So on Friday, she did actually have a little bit of wax on her udder, and that's a really good sign that Amir is gonna fall pretty soon. Oh, well, that you want to be in the video. <laughs> um, but it wasn't a whole load of wax. Like, it was just a little bit. So I checked on her every hour, every half hour, all Friday night, and no foal, unfortunately. Um, so they go out during the field. They go out to the field during the day. So we popped them out to the field all day Saturday, had my dad's little birthday. And then, as I was saying, my dad had to head off Saturday night. Um, so on Saturday night, she had a lot more wax, like she looked close and we were like, oh, dad, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so, so we brought her in and I was checking her every hour, every half hour on the camera and um, we have falling camera. So I just check her from my bedroom, it means I don't have to disturb her and it's just a lot easier for me. <laughs> um, so I checked her around half three and she was a little bit uncomfortable doing a lot of walking around the box, a little bit of pawing and that. So I actually ended up watching her for over half an hour. Um, I was just watching, watching, watching. I was like, surely she's gonna fall. But then she settled down and she started eating again. And 
On previous nights, she's even gone down, rolled everything, and then hasn't had a fall. You know, she's just get like being uncomfortable because she has a big ass fall in her belly. So yeah, I at 4 a.m. then she was back to eating her hay, just chilled out. So I was like, okay, grand. But I said I'll set my alarm for another half an hour just to double check that she's not going to fall or you know anything like that. So I woke up then at half four and I looked at the camera, and there was a fall on the ground. And well, Veg was up and licking it, and I was like, ah, I can't believe I just missed that. And so I ran into my mom because mom was primed and ready to help me if anything happened, even though, bless my mom, she is not into horses at all. She has no experience with them, and she was so game to help. She was like, yeah, yeah, like, I'll help. Like, <laughs> what a legend. Um, so I actually looked back on the camera because it, it records the. We has a, it has a memory card that records everything that it films so she was yeah eating her hay at 4 a.m then at 4 08 she had a little feet sticking out and then at 4 21 or 4 20 he was born and he was out <laughs> and it was as quick and easy as that So yeah, it was great that it was so easy and I uh, do take comfort knowing that, you know, if she was any longer than 15 minutes pushing this fall out, I would have been there because, you know, I was checking her. Um, so if anything was any way slow or going wrong, like I definitely would have been there in time, thank goodness. But yeah, she was just that good. So obviously being a maiden mare, we were a little bit worried that, you know, she wouldn't know what to do exactly. And Welbeck is a feisty mare. <laughs> She's a chestnut mare through and through. Um, she is lovely to us, but to other horses, she's not so affectionate. So we were like, ooh, this could be a prime candidate for a full rejection. So we just wanted to make sure we were definitely there and you know, watching everything. Oh, <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I jumped into my tracky bottoms and ran down to the yard to have a look at what was going on. Um, but yeah, she was just licking him and licking and licking him. She was obsessed with him. She absolutely adored him. It was really, really cute. Um, I was 
delighted to see a little chestnut foal with his lovely white face that matches Welbeck's perfectly. It's so cute. Um, I then went in and checked his gender, so I saw that he was a colt. I also dipped his navel in an antiseptic spray that we made up. It's dilute Chlorhex. Um, yeah, and I just made sure like he didn't have any very obvious issues like hernia or anything like that. Um, but he looked all good, so I stepped back and left him to it to try and get up. So, so the general rule of thumb is they need to be up within one hour, nursing within two hours, and then the mare needs to pass the placenta within three hours. So he is a cult and they are notorious for being very slow. <laughs> and he got up at the hour mark and then fell back over. So we we're like, oh, come on, mate. So then he got up and I just held him by the tail to keep him up. And once he kind of studied for a moment, he was off and he was he was happy then. So that was good. He got up on the hour. We won't say within the hour. The next up was nursing, which was slightly difficult because Welbeck, being a maiden mare, has never nursed a foal before. So her teats are very small. And her teats are smaller than most maidens. I have seen a lot of horse teats and hers are tiny. <laughs> so yeah, it was a struggle. Um, obviously they need to get that nursing, they need to start nursing ASAP because they need to get the colostrum, which is the first milk that a mare produces. It's full of antibodies. It's so important. Foals are born with absolutely no immunity. So don't really know why nature decided to do that, but <laughs> It just means that it's so important that those foals get that colostrum as soon as they can. Um, a lot of studs will actually milk the mare and tube the colostrum into the foal be even before they even get up just to make sure that they have that on board. Um, but that is better on you know very busy studs when you might have three mares falling at the same time and you don't have time to sit and watch them for two hours, three hours to make sure that they get their colostrum. But we only have two mares so we were willing to dedicate that time. <laughs> So we just left him at it for, you know, we gave him his another hour because that would have been nursing within two hours if he nursed an hour after getting up. Um, and he was so close, guys. It was painful to watch, really. Um, watching foals try to get on the suck is so painful. If you're a farmer and you've ever tried to get a lamb sucking or a calf, you know how painful this is. <laughs> um, so yeah, he was very, very close, but Welbeck was so good. She stood stock still. She, you know, she'd move her leg out of the way to make loads of room for him. She was just brilliant. We couldn't get over how good Welbeck was because again, my dad wasn't there. I had my mum who had very limited horse handling skills. And I was like, oh, if my mum has to hold a very stressed out Welbeck and I have to try and hold the foal, this could be a small issue here. But Welbeck was brilliant. My mum just stood at her head just to make, you know, make sure she didn't move around, but she was being so good. Um, and then I just, you know, I gave him the hour. He was so close, but he just wasn't getting it. So we just started guiding him in um, with foals. You cannot make them do anything. If you push a foal, they will push back 100%. So just trying to guide him in, you know, you can't push their heads in. They just will not do it. Um, just kept bringing him towards the teeth. I, milked out a tiny bit of milk and rubbed it around the teeth just so he knew exactly where it was and he, you know like he'd get onto it but it's just they they're feeling with their lips and it was just such a tiny teeth you wouldn't even it doesn't look like a teeth it doesn't feel like a teeth to him so he was like man I don't know where this teeth is <laughs> so we got a little bit of honey put a little bit of honey in the teeth just so he knew you know that was the right spot um, and yeah, after about 20 minutes of trying, he got it. Um, we were absolutely thrilled. He, once he got the, once he just found it and sucked on it and actually got some milk, he was like, I'm never letting go. <laughs> like, I finally found this mystical teat full of milk and I'm never letting go. Um, he was great. He was straight on it. Really, really good. So he got all his clostrum, um, which was absolutely brilliant. 
And Welbeck, again, was just brilliant. She would kept nudging him in, she was licking his bum, making sure he stayed there. Like, I couldn't fault her, I really, really couldn't. The other thing that I wanted to make sure I saw was that he passed some meconium. Meconium is the first feces that comes out. It can be very hard and tacky. Um, and especially in colts, they're very, very prone to having an impaction, a meconium impaction which can be quite serious if it gets left um, to get out of hand. So very important that we saw him pass some meconium. We did see him pass quite a lot, which was great. Um, at this stage, it was about half seven in the morning. So we said, look, I will, well, my mum headed off to bed because bless her, she'd done a lot and you know we were kind of sorted here. Um, so she went off to bed. I was so wound up. I was really hungry because my body was like breakfast. Um, but then I was so like so much adrenaline that I couldn't eat. I like felt sick <laughs> So I tried to go to sleep Set for like an hour then came back down and I was just, like I'm obsessed. I can't leave him alone And obviously when I was talking about the one two three hours I said that the placenta needs to pass within three hours so Well, like actually exceeded everything there and passed it within half an hour She passed it before the little foal was even up so then when she's passed it, I took it out. Um, it's inside out when it um, comes out of the mare, it comes out inside out. So you bring it the right way out again and you lay it out and you make sure that everything is there. I can show you a picture of hers. Um, there is always a hole where the foal came out of. Um, so that is a normal hole. And then you're looking for if there's any missing bits, big bits missing. The most common site of a missing piece or a tear is the horn that the foal was not in. So it's called the non-gravid horn. Um, but on hers, there was actually a small tear in the gravid horn, which means the horn that the foal was in. Um, but I did think that it looked more like a tear as opposed to a piece missing and um, the pieces match together very very well so um, it just meant that I was very aware that there was possibly a piece missing so I've been taking Welbeck's temperature um, three or four times a day since then it's she's had no temperature at all she's been really on her food and no signs of um, retained placenta and metritis or anything like that so that's just so important a retained placenta can kill a horse it's not like in cattle so it's just yeah you just really need to keep an eye on them if you have any doubts about your placenta get your vet to come out and have a look at it and they can flush out the mare's uterus make sure there's no bits missing they can put their hand in just making sure um but we were very happy now that she had passed everything and everything's all good that was the foaling part of this story so the whole next day, which was Sunday, um, we just kept an eye on him, make sure he stayed sucking. Another really important indicator is that they're urinating. Another problem that can happen during the birth um, is a ruptured bladder. I feel like I just know way too many things that can go wrong. And <laughs> that's just the pains of being a vet. But um, I just wanted to make sure I saw him urinate and Urinating is also a great sign that they are nursing enough because obviously the milk is their only source of liquids. So if they are urinating well with a really good stream, that means they are well hydrated. So I kept an eye on his urination, his meconium. He, although he had passed quite a bit that morning, he was still kind of straining quite a bit. Um, and they can actually get ca cause an inguinal hernia where some of their intestines fall into their scrotum. If they keep straining, this actually happened to our other foal, Dally. So that's why I was very aware of this. Um, and when he kept straining, kept straining, I was like, oh, look, I'll just get him an enema. So um, you can ask your vet what kind of enema that you can use. But in general, one that's OK for a baby is usually OK for a foal. But do not give them too many because obviously there's a lot of sodium in there and you don't want to be messing with those electrolytes. So gave him an enema and about an hour later he was passing loads of meconium and he wasn't straining anymore, he was totally happy and you know, a few hours after that then the feces that was coming through was a lot softer, it wasn't really meconium anymore, it was really the milk that he was drinking. So that was great, so that was that in the clear, urination in the clear, 
Another thing to, to just keep an eye on is the umbilicus. So obviously we disinfected it at birth and then it's time to just let it dry up. Um, we disinfect it because that is prime entry for bacteria to get into his bloodstream, uh, which is really common in falls. They can get septicemia, they can get septic joints, everything like that. So, and that's why we disinfect that. And then we just want it to shrivel up and dry up and it's drying up really, really nicely. You can have your vet come out to do a full check, like some quick little things is, you know, his eyes. Um, another thing they can get is entropion when their eyelids roll inwards and then their eyelashes are scra scratching on the cornea of their eye, uh, which can also, which can obviously cause corneal ulcers, which is not very nice for them. So you check that. Another thing you check is when they're drinking, is there any uh, milk coming out of their nostrils? They could have a cleft palate or something like that. Um, but he did not have any of those things. <laughs> so when to put your foal out in the field. So with our little guy, um, foals can often have contracted tendons or lax tendons. Um, and they're called flexural deformities. Uh, they're so common and they often you know, can be fixed with very little inter intervention. So our little foal here has slightly lax <laughs> knees and hind fetlocks. Um, and basically it means that if we just chucked him out in the field now, they will not improve. He'll just keep using those attendants. They'll keep getting laxer. <laughs> Why is he so cute? Um, so in, instead of just chucking him out in the field, he stayed in for most of the day. He went, he did go out for two hours. Oh, he went out for a hand grace for two hours, just to where there's lots of fresh grass there. Mostly to give Welbeck a little bit of grass and get her out of the stable. He actually lay down for a sleep, which was very sweet. Um, but already like those tendons are strengthening up and are much less lax. So we're delighted with that. So then the following day, he went out to the actual field for two hours, which was great. He was running around. He loved it. Um, that was, yeah, his first time out, his first time in a field. It was so, so sweet to see. Welbeck was a very protective mom. She did not want to, she did not want him out of her sight. Whenever um, he was running around her, she was like spinning around, trying to keep him in her eyesight. Oh, poor Welbeck. <laughs> But anyway, she's, yeah, she's just such a good mom. So protective, really on the ball with him. It's very, very nice to see. So I might have missed out on some things. This is definitely not meant to be some sort of tutorial on how to foal a mare. And um, this is just kind of a few little pointers and things to remember, things that just come off the top of my head, but I definitely didn't kind of script this video. So I was just talking as I went along. Um, but now to the most exciting part, um, his name. Obviously, I have not told you guys his name yet. Um, we didn't have a name picked out at all when he was born, which was, yeah, funny. But um, we just were so excited for him to be healthy and, you know, alive <laughs> that we just wanted that first and then we'd worry about names later. So I did ask you guys for some input um, if anyone had some good ideas. One thing a lot of people said was that we needed to have a name to start with W for Welbeck, which I never thought of, but that is a very, I really like that idea. Um, especially because W is kind of an unusual letter to start a name with. So it's really nice to follow that down um, Welbeck's line. And maybe it's something that we'll do with future foals from her. Um, and then another kind of common suggestion was a name that had well in front of it for Welbeck again, um, just to kind of, yeah, just to kind of a little nod to Welbeck. Um, so for that reason, for his show name, we have chosen the name Well Dignified because obviously the well from Welbeck and his sire is dignified. And I think dignified and dignity is such a classy word. I mean, um, so yeah, I think it's just a very nice little nod to both his parents, Well Dignified. Um, but for his stable name, which is what we will be calling him, um, my dad kind of started calling him Diggy, like short for dignified. And then we were like, hmm, Diggy. And then my mom was like, Diggy, what about Wiggy? And then we decided that we would call him Wiggy. <laughs> Wiggy. <laughs> I think he likes the name. <laughs> so yeah, that is his name. His name is Wiggy. 
He's the cutest little thing. He's, yeah, it couldn't have gone any smoother. We're so delighted with Welbeck. We're delighted with him. Um, some people were asking, is Welbeck gonna come back in the work or is she gonna go back in full? And it's looking like we're gonna put her back in full. Um, you know, everything going to plan, but we'll play that by ear and we'll let you know. Um, but yeah, how exciting guys. Um, so yeah, this is Wiggy. So the next thing we need to get excited for is this lady here. Fiona is due very, very soon. Um, she is in the safe zone of over 320 days, so she technically could fall any day. She's not looking super close at the moment, but her due date is the 30th of April. So what do you think, guys? Will we get a filly and a cult? Maybe? What do you think, Welbeck? Or what do you think, Fiona? Fiona is actually obsessed with Wiggy, which is kind of cute. She does love him. Um, and Welbeck's pretty good about letting her, you know, sniff through the little window there. Um, but once she has her own foal, she won't care one bit about Wiggy. She'll be all about her own foal, which is so cute. Um, so yeah, that is the next thing that's coming. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you're excited to see Wiggy and see him progress and grow up and yeah it's so nice um it's funny to think that cal and ali the horses we also bred when they were just foals they were on this channel too you can scroll back like six years <laughs> and see that um but yeah and, and in six years time who knows what i'll be doing on little wiggy um so yeah i hope you enjoy the video and i will see you next time bye guys